Hello everyone and welcome back to another Watch Review video. My name is Hector and today on the bench we have an Invicta Pro Diver. Invicta is an American watch designer manufacturer and this particular Pro Diver has a Miyota Caliber 8215 which is a Japanese movement. It's an automatic in high winding caliber with a quick date setting, a running time of 42 hours, 21 joules, and accuracy of negative 20, positive 40 seconds a day. Miyota calibers are preferred worldwide for their durability and high impact resistance. And honestly, it is obvious because this movement has been brutally beat up and it still runs. The gaze and crystal are badly scratched. It looks like someone used this timepiece to work in the construction. And seriously, polishing, replacing the crystal and the entire vessel would cost me a lot of money and a lot of time. So the best option for me and something I have been desiring to do is a watch modification. For that reason, I order a fully clear acrylic case and rubber bands on Alibaba. Everything costs, a lot, costs less than 10 bucks. What I will do is to disassemble the entire movement, clean it, oil it, and throw it in the new case and strap. So first, we're gonna, uh, before cleaning it, I want to put in a time grapher to see the current state of the movement and the area of improvement that I have from this project. And as you will see in just a moment, this watch is running bad. You're gonna see, just take a look at the time grapher. The parameters are all over the place. The rate is extremely low, negative 149 seconds a day. The amplitude is not even close to normal, which is uh, above 200. And the bit error is huge, 7.6. That's not acceptable, it should be below one. So we gotta take it to the doctor because it is suffering from extremely low blood pressure and a huge arrhythmia. So first, we're gonna take the back off, of course. There we go, then we proceed with the crown and stem. The movement comes right out. Next, I remove the hands by using a plastic film and hands levers. The movement, there we go with the movement plastic ring. And we can remove the dial by unscrewing a couple of screws on the side of the main plate and dial out. Now we put on the holder, take the oscillating weight out. And I want to continue by removing the balance, which is the most fragile pore and delicate pore in any movement. Now we have four screws we need to take out to remove the plate. And then I start removing all pores and components from this dial side of the caliber. This is the dial side. The other side is called like the watchmaker side. Now, of course, we got to remove the hour and minute wheels, a lot of springs, the day disc, of course, I already removed the motion work, the keyless mechanism with springs and levels and most certainly we got to remove the canon pinion well, I'm confused now because I forgot to do something very important and that is to release power from the main spring before taking the keyless mechanism apart so, you know what? I have to put the keyless mechanism back together and release power by slowly unwinding the spring while holding the click back. And that's what I'm going to do right now. There we go. So holding the click back and I have to unwind the watch. Now I can unscrew this main bridge that covers the automatic parts and the train of wheels. Take the automatic reduction wheel the ratchet wheel, winding mechanism, there we go, one by one, the barrel, then it is time for the train, I remove the complete train starting with the third and fourth wheel, followed by the second pinion, I move on with the pallet bridge, oops, you didn't see that right? I hear when screws fall on the wrong place. Okay, safely remove the escape wheel, which is super delicate as well. And now I get the pallet four with its bridge. And we're getting to the end of this disassembly by removing the bridge that holds the center wheel in place. And of course, the click with its spring. There we go. 
All right. In order to secure the balance, I put it back on the main play while cleaning all parts, of course. The main play is the happy place for any balance complete. So now I have all parts in my containers ready to be clean, of course. We still need to take the mainspring out of the barrel, clean it, oil it, and put it back in the barrel again. But for now, I will show you a fragment of how I clean watch parts by hand, because I don't have a cleaning machine. But I have a project that I am putting together about how to make my own semi-automatic watch cleaning machine. So if you haven't subscribed, do so now, so you don't miss out when I polish the cleaning machine project. Well, let me tell you that I divide the cleaning process into two different stages. The first is the degreasing stage where I place parts in a glass container with naphtha, and I use an artist brush to remove grease from parts, as you see me doing right now. On the second stage, I label three containers with numbers 1, 2, and 3, and fill them with 99% isopropyl alcohol. This is the racing stage. I then pass all parts from the first to the second container and from the second container to the third without skipping any number, making sure by the third rinse there is no trace of grease or dirt on any part. You know what? Most of the time a watch runs poorly, not because it has a broken part, but because the lubricants break down forming a thick paste that reduces the distribution of energy from the main spring through the train of wheels to the skamen. So this is a very important stage and process. And this will result in a very low amplitude if we neglect the cleaning process. So believe it or not, many, many problems can be fixed just by doing a good cleaning and a proper lubrication. Okay, now going back to the bottle. I'm gonna open the lid here, take the lid out, carefully remove uh, the mini spring. So this is a good time to take a picture of the orientation of the main spring. And the safest way to take the main spring out of the barrel is by releasing one loop at a time. We can do this by alternating hands and fingers like you see me doing now. Then I clean all these components. You're gonna see me cleaning all these components in just a moment. There we go. The barrel, the lid, and the arbor. We have to clean them all. And then I proceed to lubricate the main spring. Already, I do little dabs of breaking grease on the side wall of the barrel and proceed to mount the spring back into the right position. There we go. Next come the arbor, and under the microscope I will show you how I make it click into the right position by turning the arbor. You're gonna see that? Just a second. And boom, there it goes. Now I put a little bit of HP 1300 on top and it is ready for the lid. Something I forgot to mention during the cleaning process is that all jewels must be pegged using preferably wood. Cleaning old parts with a paint brush is excellent, but brush hairs are too soft to go through the opening on each jewel. So if we don't clean them, we will face a poor parameters like very low amplitude back on my time buffer. So um, we don't want to neglect this process. All right, putting the movement now back together. Okay, so it's a lot more complex than just taking it apart, but we start here with our center wheel and bridge. We lubricate it. Okay, then we go with the barrel. Put some oil, then the ratchet wheel. Now I put together the winding mechanism. I use HP, HP 1300 as the lubricant for these parts. Then I move on with the second spinning. There we go. Next, the escape wheel with the entire train of wheels. Here comes the automatic winding parts. They click and it spring, and I use Molico DX to lubricate them. I mean, they click and, and the spring. A little bit of Molico DX. Okay, there we go. Spring, and you're gonna see me with Molico right there. Okay, now the reduction wheel, and I cover everything with the main bridge. There we go.
Alrighty, for lubrication I use 9010 for low torque high speed wheels and HP1300 for high torque low speed wheels. Now I move on with the keyless work and hand setting mechanism. I use Molycott DX for metal to metal sliding friction and HP1300 for metal to metal spinning friction. There is a wide variety of opinions about how to oil a movement. And I've heard about people who still use organic oil and grease from whales. Some of us just use the same type of oil for everything. But honestly, at the end of the day, each watchmaker will make his own theory about properly oiling a watch. In my case, I just use 9010, HP 1300, and grease for metal to metal friction. But honestly, whatever you do, oiling is very important and it will determine the performance of the watch. I continue the assembly with the Canon Pinion, part of the motion mechanism. As you see now, the minute wheel and I cover this part with a bridge or plate. There we go. Next come the day jumper spring. The date wheel, that is the, actually the only part made of plastic on this movement. Then I lubricate the cannon pinion to receive the hour wheel. There we go. I place the spring or washer that holds the hour wheel in place with the help of the dial. Next comes the date disc spring. Then I place the quick date jumper. I mount the day disc and place the plate that holds everything together. Before moving on, what I'm going to do right now is make sure the escape will rotate freely when I wind the watch. I mount the pad four with its bridge. I need to be careful because the pivots on the fork are very tiny and I don't want to snap them off. Then I oil the exit pallet zone, as you see me now. Then, there we go. Then comes the balance. It is a little tricky to place the balance on the right position. So when I turn the balance cock, the impulse stone slides into the pilot's horns and motion starts, as you see right now. Then I continue by removing, cleaning and oiling balance jewels. There we go. I'm going to be using 9010 to lubricate them. So... You're gonna see me doing it now. So I put a tiny drop of 9010 on the center of the capsule. It should cover around 50% of the surface area. And then, carefully, what I'm gonna do is replace it back, allowing capillary reaction to take place. I should see a perfect circle of oil on the center of the capsule. And you know what? If the oil looks distorted, I have to start this process all over again. And now it's time for time grapher. I place it you know, on time grapher, and we can see right away, you're gonna see right now, in just a moment, a big improvement. Big improvement. Now, the amplitude is much higher, more than 200, the bit error is under one, and the rate is not that terrible anymore. It's positive 16, positive 24 now, but you know what? Instead of regulating this caliber right now, I will let it run for 48 hours minimum. The reason behind this, is that we have to allow the new lubricants to find its permanent place through the capillary reaction. If I regulate this watch immediately after the service, I will waste my time because all parameters on the movement will be constantly changing for at least 48 hours. So immediately after service, just let the watch run by itself. Now the pressure tester. I don't want to skip this part in the process because if I don't have a properly sealed case, I will be dealing with a lot of rust in the near future due to moisture finding its way through the case into the movement. It is time for dial and hints. Aligning the dial into the right position shouldn't be hard. And then I secure the dial by tightening the two screws on the side of the main plate. Now we're going to set the watch at 12 o'clock because I want all three hands to be aligned the best possible. And we get this by turning the stem until the day changes. Once it does, I stop moving the crown and I proceed with the hands. I start with the hour hand. I use my hand pusher to help me on the way. Then the minute hand. 
I try to, to have perfect alignment and then we're gonna use the hand pushers to push it down into place and last but not least we're gonna put the second hand second hands all second hands always give me trouble okay so now we're gonna continue with casing it is time now for the casing and it's very simple to do we put the movement inside the case put the plastic ring and now we're gonna just cut the new stem to fit the new case first I take the old crown and stem out then I attach the new stem to the new crown there we go okay and I'm gonna lubricate it now and push it all the way into the winding position that's what I'm gonna do right now all the way in as you can see the new stem is very big you see the space there so with the caliper I measure the distance between the case and the inside wall of the crown and that's exactly what I have to cut from my new stem I mark the stem and cut it to the right size then just attach it again we're gonna lubricate the gasket on the crown tube and we're gonna put it back in the movement now we're gonna put the oscillating weight and it's just a new gasket for the back and the movement and the case will be all ready there we go beautiful okay now it's time for the straps one okay there we go the second one and the job is done now I want to take a moment to enjoy the final result I want to say that this is my first watch modification and I am very pleased with the final product the completely clear case adds a peculiar touch to the watch and the straps match the dial to a T thinking twice you know what I don't know if what I did was a modification or a Franken watch because the case and straps are not original the only original parts are the movement dial and hands Maybe someone that watches this video can explain to me better the difference between a modification and a Franken watch. Anyways, I'll put it on and see how it looks on my wrist. When I peel this, this is so satisfying. Taking this plastic, oh my goodness, I like it. Look at that. I think it's, it looks like kind of sport watch. Nice. I'm just taking a second here to appreciate the work and to enjoy a little bit. Okay, the dial and the straps are great. They match perfectly. Now, let's put it in the dark and see the quality of the loom. Wow, the loom is pretty nice. I just turned the lights off and it glows like a gem. Well, thank you for watching and allowing me some minutes of your time. If you liked this video, please subscribe, share, comment, and give us a thumbs up so more people can find our videos. See you on the next one.